Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья и наши гости. Вы на канале Элла Младнам и с вами Лидия. Если вам интересна жизнь в Великобритании, подписывайтесь на наш канал. Сегодня прекрасный солнечный летний день, и я приглашаю вас совершить увлекательное путешествие. Мы отправимся в круиз по Темзе на речном лайнере. Наше путешествие началось возле Биг Бена. Здесь мы приобретем билеты. Mm -hmm. Есть несколько маршрутов речного круиза. Мы выбрали маршрут от Вестминстерского до Тауэрского моста. Это наши билеты на круиз, Сити Круиз. Посмотрите, какой красивый вид открывается с набережной. Давайте быстренько пройдем на персте, подождем наш круизный лайнер. Путь оказался длинным. Посмотрите на этого малыша. Он напомнил мне песни Чунга-Чанга из мультика «Катерок». Дети оказались хитрее. Вестминстерский мост с необычного ракурса выглядит просто великолепно. Все, пришли. Один пароходик ушел. Сейчас она наш придет. А вот и наш лайнер. Красавец. Не правда ли? Вы знаете, сегодняшний тур мы совершим в новом формате. Дело в том, что нам настолько понравился наш гид, что мы решили оставить его рассказ, а перепустить как субтитры. Заодно можно будет послушать оригинальный английский язык. Пассажиры вышли, все столики протираются. Молодцы. Все живенько двинулись на посадку. И, конечно же, на верхнюю открытую палубу. Итак, все расселись с соблюдением дистанции через ряд, и теперь можно осмотреться вокруг. Люди все прибывают и прибывают. Такой кораблик у нас. Ну вот, мы отдали швартовые и отчалили. Всем приятной прогулки по Темзе. The Millennium of Peace. Just to give you a uh, quick update on what we're doing, uh, we're just going to make a quick stop at the London Eye. Once we finish that, we'll be back on the microphone uh, to give you a brief safety announcement.
Вы знаете, видео о колесе обозрения «Лондонский глаз» было одним из первых видео на нашем канале. История создания гигантского колеса обозрения, особенности конструкции, размеры, сколько капсул и так далее. Лондонский глаз – гигантское колесо обозрения, крупнейшее в Европе и одно из крупнейших в мире. Его высота 135 метров, это около 45 этажей. С верхней точки открывается потрясающий панорамный вид практически на весь Лондон и его окрестности до 40 километров. Если вам интересно узнать подробности о лондонском глазе, не стесняйтесь, заходите, смотрите, знакомьтесь с иконой Лондона. Теперь я передаю слово нашему гиду-юмористу. Перевод на русский язык вы найдете в субтитрах. Я вам очень рекомендую послушать увлекательный и познавательный рассказ гида, разбавленный юмором и шутками. Надеюсь, что прогулка вам понравится. We do have to give you a brief safety announcement. Nothing to alarm you, just to let you know about the safety features on the boat. This vessel is fully licensed by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. It's got the most up-to-date life-saving equipment. Life rings, life rafts, and life jackets. These are clearly marked around the vessels too much. If I get anything wrong, please bear with me. We're going to start the tour off. We're going to start to the left there. You've got the gothic looking building. It looks like Dracula's Palace from a Disney film. This is Whitehall Court Mansions, one of the first royal residents here on the Thames. Within the mansions, there's a luxurious five-star hotel, the Royal Horse Guards Hotel. The area to your right is Whitehall. You may have been today, Soho, Chinatown, West End of London, sort of way to your left there in the area of Whitehall. The first bridge we pass under today, the Charing Cross railway line. Either side, the golden Jubilee walkways. This is a known fact here on the Thames. If you wave to these people on the first bridge, you get a wave back seven years of good luck. So go on you lot, you wave your arms. Oh. We're gonna make a racket. There's another bridge the other side, keep waving. You'll get seven years of good luck. Did you get a wave back? Seven years that is, starts right now. Enjoy it. <laughs> and look to the right there, the building, the Royal Festival Hall, the last remaining building from the Festival of Great Britain back in 1951. The building, it's got the finest acoustics in the world. It's drawn in all the big acts over the years. People such as Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Pavarotti, Elton John, the list, it goes on. They've all performed in that concert hall. And if you look to the left, some of you have got some cameras out. Over here to the left, you've got London's oldest monument. That stone column there, with the two guards at the bottom, clear Patras needle. The needle is said to be over 3,500 years old. Was given to us by a thankful Egyptian government for Nelson's victory over Napoleon and the French in the Battle of the Nile. There is a pair to that needle, and that stands in Central Park, New York City, worth a photo of the monument. And the bridge ahead of us here, this is Waterloo Road Bridge, nicknamed the Ladies Bridge. This bridge was built by a roughly 80% female workforce, whilst the men were out fighting for king and country. This is the only bridge here on the River Thames to be built on time and also under budget. So ladies, a fine job on the bridge. I'll go on then, give yourself a round of applause. I know you was asking for it. There was a man in charge. Oh, my God. He done a great job on the bridge. Uh, look here to the right. 
you got the building there with the electrical sign going across. That is this country's national theatre. That building has been voted the ugliest building on the banks of the River Thames every single year. <laughs> Prince Charles, he says the building looks like a nuclear power station been smuggled into London. Now I think it looks like a multi-storey car park. Mm. I'm sure you'd all agree, a very ugly building. Now you would have heard of the uh -huh. saying though, don't judge a book by its cover. It applies to that building. We've in here three of the finest auditoriums in the world. The largest auditorium is the Olivier one, named after the actor and the founder, Laurence Olivier, the National Theatre on your right. You'll notice quite a busy side of London on your right here. ABC. This is the South Bank ABM. of the Thames. This is the entertainment side. There's a Thames path there that people are commuting on. It starts at the London Eye. It goes down to Tower Bridge. If you're looking for something to do this evening, or even this afternoon, I highly recommend walking up or down the Thames path. It will take you about 45 minutes, but en route you will come across traditional markets, traditional pubs, also street performers. Look over there, probably something you never thought you'd see in London today, a gorgeous, golden, tropical, sandy beach. Who would have thought London has the finest beaches in the world? This afternoon, that beach here to your right, as it is now, it will be packed. The adults, they build sandcastles, they sunbathe, and the children, as they are now, they run down to the polluted water and they pick up objects such as tyres and bottles. They call this in London a traditional family day out and it's free of charge to go to the beach, the South Bank Riviera, a lovely place. Exactly. We're going to stay to your rights there. We've got that red building with the letters OXO at the top. This is Stamford Wharf. This is where they used to manufacture and store the OXO gravy cube. The letters OXO at the top. They don't do it there now, they do it further up the country in a place called Lancashire. This building has been transformed into a shopping centre at the bottom. In the middle, you've got luxury, unaffordable apartments. And on the top there, with a glass front, a Harvey Nichols restaurant. The restaurant has been voted one of the top five in all of London. So the Oxo mm. Tower on your right. Top five? Wow. Go to your left hand side, look behind the works there. You'll see a nice collection of buildings. The gothic looking one, that is Zion College. That is where Her Majesty the Queen keeps her personal diaries. It's also where the Bible was printed on the Claxton Press. Next door to Zion College, the old city London school for boys. Many of our greatest statesmen and prime ministers, they have been educated at the school. Sir Winston Churchill, he went to the school before going on to Harrow building. College. This, this is no longer a school today. It's an American bank now, JP Morgan. Their HQ oh, yeah. for the UK, JP located within the building on your left. And we've got a new building up to the right there. That's brand new, that. It's only just been finished. Number one, Blackfriars. If you've got three million pounds in your bank account, you do need three million pounds, you will get a ground floor apartment. The top floor penthouse sold recently 29 million pounds. A nice place to visit. Number one, Blackfriars. And the bridges ahead of us here, these are the closest bridges on the Thames also the lowest we pass through. This first one here is the road bridge. As we go through the road bridge, you'll see in the middle, there are red columns standing on their own. These are the original foundations for the first railway bridge to span this part of the river. This was designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. It was the Alexandra Railway Line. This is where the steam trains, they used to pass over.
to the skyline, you got the dome and the golden cross. That is Sir Christopher Wren's masterpiece. Sir Christopher Wren was a very famous architect. He built the 50 churches of London, also St Paul's Cathedral, there to your left. It took him 35 years to do it, and it only cost 75,000 pounds. The cathedral stands at 365 feet tall. That's an easy number to remember, one foot for every day of the year. You see the dome there at the St Paul's? That is the second largest dome in Europe to stand on a building. The first one is at St Peter's Vatican City in Rome. You can go to St Paul's Cathedral Monday to Saturday. Tickets about 30 pounds. You go there on a Sunday low, it is free of charge. That's right, free of charge. Now there is no better place than to go and watch a service at St Paul's than on a Sunday. Now because it is free, what they do ask you to do once the service is complete, you will notice a gentleman walks around with a silver champagne bucket. Most people, they put like a bank note in, five, 10, 20 pound note, as you can imagine, there's not a sound in there. They prefer the silent donation at the cathedral. Nice place to visit, St Paul's up to the left. We've got the white timber structure with the thatch roof on the top there. That is a replica of Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. What they do in this theatre, they reenact all of Shakespeare's plays. It usually runs every year, April the 23rd, goes all the way for the end of October. This year being slightly different, we've all been stuck at home, but most of the time, they run that time. They do the plays in the periodic way. So there's no microphones, there's no lighting, just their voices and the theatre itself. Has anyone on the boat heard of the saying, the show must go on? Yeah, quite a few of you. This is where it originated from. Mm. It doesn't have a roof. Oh my God. This is we the standing go section at the Globe. Now five pounds, live entertainment in London. Wow. This is great value for money. Of course. And is everyone enjoying the live commentary? Yeah. 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 As I said at the start, we are the crew on the boat. Uh, we're here for your safety. We do this commentary. This is an old tradition on the Thames. So I do hope you're enjoying it. We're gonna carry on. As we go through Southwark Road Bridge, you have a look to your right. Very shortly, you will see an old pub sitting in the corner. The pub is called the Anchor Tavern at Bankside. And it was founded in 1615. It makes the pub just over 400 years old. Wow. They produced some films in that pub before. Getting her to the Greek. And also the Mission Impossible film. Some very famous people, they've had a drink in that pub. Samuel Pepys. William Shakespeare, Sir Christopher Wren, and Tom Cruise. Tom They've Cruise, had a drink yeah. in the pub. Now, me and my friend, the captain, who's driving the boat, we spend a lot of time in that pub. <laughs> we visit that pub after work every single night. Cool. We do research <laughs> in the pub. Good. <laughs> and we research the commentary which we provide you all. Ladies and gentlemen, it does take hours and hours but it's all for your benefit, a nice place for research. The Anchor Tavern on the right. And we look to the right here, notice there's quite a few children on this boat. One for the kids here, you've got the pirate ship. Has anyone seen the film Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah. Well that ship on your right hand side, it has nothing to do with those films whatsoever. <laughs> this is Sir Francis Drake's Golden Hind. Drake was the first Englishman to sail a ship around the world. Today the ship is a museum, as I say, a good place for the kids. They can go on there free of charge, run around, knacker themselves out. A good place for the family on the right. There's a pub next door as well. A bit of research. Just ahead of the boat here, the next bridge on our tour. Does anyone know the name of this bridge which is coming into view? Yes, young man? London Bridge. London Bridge, did you say London Bridge? Yeah. You're right, don't worry. This is called London Bridge, <laughs> commonly mistaken for Tower Bridge. They have made it easy to identify today. 
they've inscripted the words London Bridge into the stonework. It's the fifth one to span this part of the Thames over 2,000 years. Now the bridge before this, the fourth one, it was sinking into the mud. Took it down bit by bit and stone by stone. They sold it to an American oil tycoonist. His name was Robert McCullough. What he'd done with the bridge is he shipped it over to America. He rebuilt it, Lake Havasu City in Arizona. It's a tourist attraction today in the States. We go up to the right there, we got the tallest building in Western Europe, the Shard of Glass. The Shard of Glass stands just over 1,000 feet tall, designed by a very famous Italian architect, Renzo Piano. They offered Renzo Piano one million pound for that design. He declined it. Instead, he wanted the top floor penthouse. Oh. He later sold the penthouse for the sum of 25 million pounds. Okay. A very clever businessman, Renzo exactly. Piano. Within the Shard, there are restaurants, there's bars, a five-star Shangri-La hotel, and on the 72nd floor, a viewing platform. Oh, yeah. We're on a clear day in London, you'll see around 30 miles in all directions. Ladies and gentlemen, the Shard, it will cost you quite a bit of money. It's about 35 pounds per person. I've got a better option for you. If you visit that building on the left there, looks like a walkie talkie with the white crane on the top. That is 20 Sky Fenchurch Garden. Street. It's home to the world's largest Sky Garden. Sky Garden yeah. The great thing about the Sky Garden, it's free. You can go up there, you get the same views as you would from the Shard, but it's free. Save your 35 pounds, enjoy the bar up to the left there, the Sky Garden. We've got the warship here to the right, that is the HMS Belfast. Now take note of that flag which is flying from the bow of the ship. This is a Union Jack flag, and it is the only Union Jack you will see today. To be a Union Jack flag, it has to be flown from the front of a naval vessel on a wooden jack star. The other flags which you see on the building to the left there and some of the other buildings, they are just called Union flags. The Belfast today is an extension to the Imperial War Museum. You can go on there very soon. They're just finishing off the paintwork now. It's gonna reopen very soon. There are nine decks to get through, all the way from the engine room to the wheelhouse. A ton of history on that warship. We've got our destination there to the left, that is Tower Millennium Pier. We're meant to take you straight to the pier and end the tour, but we're feeling very nice today. As we make our way down to Tower Bridge, look over here to your left, you have the Tower of London. Brilliant place that, absolutely steeped in history. Originally built for William the Conqueror back in 1078, that's been a few things at this time. That's been a zoo, it's been a royal mint where they made money, an observatory and even a prison. Most famously known though as a place of execution and torture. Mm. Now if you were found guilty of treason back in the day, you were rowed down the river from Parliament by a Thames waterman, just like us, but without the live commentary. You were taken into the Traitor's Gate, which you see on the river wall behind the Uber boat, up to the bloody tower with the four turrets. Your head, it would have been chopped off. Now, if you were a celebrity, it wouldn't end there for you. Your head was dipped in a barrel of tar. It was placed on a spike and then placed on London Bridge to warn off any wannabe traitors. This was known as a very gruesome way of going. And unfortunately, today in London, we don't have these punishments. We've now got far greater ones today. We've got a thing now called community service and rehabilitation centers. We like to rehabilitate people. It works a treat, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got the Tower, Pier, uh, Tower Bridge on the right there. Tower Bridge was completed 1894, designed by Sir John Wolfe Barry. I'm sure you're all aware on the boat, this bridge, it can open up. It opens like a double-sided drawbridge. It takes 90 seconds to fully open. The bridge is open 300 
and 64 days of the year. There's only one day, the bridge, it will not open. Can anyone guess on the boats what day that might be? Christmas. Christmas day, very popular answer. Most things shut down on Christmas day. Tower Bridge remains open. You will kick yourselves when I tell you, the day the bridge, it will not open, is the day of the London Marathon. Ah. Oh. Oh. There are 40,000 people, they run across that bridge, and apparently, if we start to open it, it would spoil the race. So we leave it shut for the day of the marathon. The bridge is built in the Gothic style to blend in with the Tower of London. So ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we've completed the turn. I hope you got a nice photo. We're gonna make our approach now into Tower Pier. A bit of safety, everyone. Make sure you listen. Remain seated or hold onto the handrails. There is a chance when we go into the pit, we may take a little bump. We don't want to lose anyone over the side. So for your safety, remain seated, hold onto the rails. When we come alongside, have a look around your arms and your feet. You make sure you've got all your personal belongings. Most importantly, do make sure you listen to this. Please remember to take your children. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is quite shocking really how many people they leave their kids on these boats on a daily occurrence. <laughs> I've got believe. seven children at home and not one of them speaks a word of English. Oh my so goodness. remember to take the kids. <laughs> Last of all, ladies and gentlemen, just a little bit about the live commentary. As I said at the start of the tour, we are your crew on the boat. We're here for the safety of you and the boat. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have enjoyed today's live commentary, you feel as though it's added to your tour, Definitely you'd like to show a little it. token of appreciation, you can do so in the old traditional way by placing a few bob into our captain's silver champagne tip bucket. Uh. And if you're wondering what happens to all the funds that go in our tip bucket, well, they're not going to be wasted. They're all going to go back to intensive research, which we're going to do later in that lovely anchor tavern that we went past. But ladies and gentlemen, all that's left for me to say, on behalf of myself, the captain, and the cabin crew, thanks very much for listening. Whatever you're doing in London, have a good time. Whatever you're doing as well, do it safely. Thanks everyone, enjoy your day. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Надеюсь, что вам понравилось наше увлекательное и познавательное турне на речном лайнере Millennium of Peace. Тысячелетие мира по Темзе. До новых встреч. Bye!